Thanks so much for the introduction, Vinny. It's really great to be back, actually, this year and see such a great turnout. So uh, as Vinny sort of touched on, I work on the Google Analytics Specialist team back in Mountain View. And uh, there are actually quite a few members from our team here today, so we're very lucky to have a lot of representation from all over the globe. Our team primarily supports the, the greater sales team with their clients, people like yourself, pre and post implementation analytics questions. And we also work with them to help um, analysts, business owners, and key stakeholders understand how to use the data in web analytics to make more strategic decisions about their online business, which is why we're all here today. So today I have the pleasure of speaking to you all about the latest features that are available in Google Analytics. I'm very excited to be talking about some of my favorite features, uh, which were most recently launched this past fall during eMetrics in particular. So before I dive into the specifics, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of context as to where we've come from in order to understand where we're moving forward next. So as Beth mentioned, when Analytics launched about five years ago, um, in late 2005, it was really a very exciting time in the web analytics space because Google Analytics um, was one of the first tools of its kind, of its feature set, that was made accessible to really anyone and everyone. So regardless of the size of your business or the sophistication of your online presence, um, you had access to information about your online traffic in, in ways that you really didn't before. And then from there, analytics really evolved into a tool that was about driving usage. You know, now that a number of businesses are adopting online measurement tools, how do, we, how do we ensure that people are actually looking at the data in their reports and taking action? And that really prompted the redesign that happened about three years ago where we made analytics a lot more friendly to use, the UI was a lot prettier, and it's pretty much what you see right now. More recently, the focus has been on how can we make analytics a more intelligent tool? It's really easy to become inundated with the data that you see in over 80 some odd reports in analytics. And so how can we make it easier for you to be able to take action based on the data that you're seeing in your account? And so in response to these needs, we introduced a number of new features in the last eight to 12 months that really make analytics a more powerful tool with greater advanced features and functionality, a more flexible tool to meet uh, all of your different unique business needs, and a more intelligent tool so that you can take action in a much more efficient way. So what exactly are all these features? So to help us understand what this new functionality is and how one might go about using them, we're gonna take a look at a, a day in the life of this hypothetical situation um, in Alex the Analyst. And Alex works for a fictional company, uh, an online news company called the Island Daily News. And he is a power user of analytics, much like many of you here. And he just loves looking at his traffic sources, pie charts, and map overlay reports all day long. So it's of no surprise that he's very much up to date with the latest and greatest that is available in analytics. So on a typical day, Alex gets to work kind of late. He used to be an engineer. So around 10 a.m., the first thing that he does is he checks his analytics intelligence reports. This is actually one of his favorite features in analytics because what it does is it automatically provides you with alerts based on significant changes that are happening in the trends and the traffic reports um, across all of your different dimensions and metrics. So it doesn't just look at visits and page views. If you're seeing like a sudden surge in bounce rate traffic from a particular referral, every recurring Thursday, this is the type of signal that will be surfaced to you within your analytics intelligence reports. So it makes things a lot easier for him because instead of having to mine through a lot of his data, it saves him a lot of time so that he can make high level changes much more quickly because we're telling you, hey, these are the kinds of things that you should be looking for. So on this particular fine day, he sees that a number of alerts have been triggered. And you can see below that a significant percent of his traffic that's been coming from YouTube, well, it looks like people are spending a lot more time on his website now, especially from users from this particular referral. He does a little bit of investigation and he finds that someone on the marketing team had just launched a new series of video on their YouTube channel promoting a new subscription service that they just launched. He looks a little bit further at this data and he finds that a significant percentage of this YouTube traffic is actually coming from mobile users, particularly from Indonesia and the Philippines. So, 
really excited by this insight that he's come across. He thinks, well, what can I do now with this information? Wouldn't it be great if I could create a mobile-specific site for the Island, Island News Daily so that I can create a much more customized experience for these users and take advantage of this invaluable source of traffic? Well, using the expanded mobile reporting, he's now able to do a much better job of that. See, previously, Alex was only able to track visits to their regular website through high-end JavaScript-enabled phones, like what you see here. But now he can track user engagement with iPhone and Android apps, as well as all visits to his mobile site from any type of web-enabled device, regardless of whether or not they have JavaScript enabled. So he's really excited. And because now, in his mobile reports, not only can he see all this traffic across the standard suite of analytics metrics, but he can also see what kind of mobile devices people are coming from, the mobile carriers, et cetera. And to set this up, it's really easy. He just had to go into his settings page, click on the advanced tab, and copy and paste the code, the server-side code snippet, and put it on his mobile site. And then all of that traffic is captured within his profile. So Alex is really fired up now. You know, he's come across this interesting information. He's ready to launch this mobile campaign. So what he should probably be doing next, actually what he probably should have been doing first, according to the presentation we saw earlier, is to set up goals. And so now, instead of just measuring the transactions on his site, he can do a much better job of capturing the quality of user engagement um, that's occurring on the Island News Daily. So as we saw earlier, you can now set up to 20 goals in order to better capture your primary and secondary conversions. See, previously, Alex was only looking at the number of people who were subscribing to their online news site, people who were paying for their paper subscription, et cetera, et cetera. All of this was captured in goal set one. But now he can create a whole new goal set to capture all of his engagement goals. How long people are staying on his site, how many pages they're viewing, because this is all valuable user uh, behavior to him that he wants to be able to keep track of as well. And to set it up, as we saw earlier again, it was, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is indicate the conditions that you want, and he's defined that anyone who's visited his site over five minutes, I consider them a valuable user. And as easy as that, he's able to set this up. So Alex has had a very productive day, clearly. And as the day draws to a close, he sleeps really, really well that night as his goals and his reports collect mass amounts of data for his viewing pleasure the next day. And he gets to work earlier the next day because he's very excited to see all of the data that's been collected. And the first thing that he does is he creates a mobile advanced segment to capture all of his mobile traffic. And he wants to be able to compare how are mobile users behaving differently than desktop users. How do they consume content differently? How do their purchase patterns vary, et cetera. And, he's, and as he's going through this process of you know, putting together this advanced segment, and as many of you probably know, it can be kind of laborious, depending on what kind of segment that you're trying to create, he realizes that his colleague, Greg, who oversees the Paradise News Daily Times, and also has his own analytics account, could really benefit from this mobile advanced segment that he just created. And so through the ability to share these templates, he doesn't have to give him the step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. In his management settings tabs, he can see not only can he share it, but he can copy, he can hide this segment from his profile in ways that he couldn't before. He copies the link, he plugs it into an email, and now, Greg, all he has to do is click on the link, and a pre-formatted advanced segment template will just appear in his account, which saves him an incredible amount of time. So as he continues to do a lot of analysis, looking at his uh, mobile advanced segment and his desktop segment, he notices that a lot of users are bouncing off of the login page. Now this prompts him to think, wouldn't it be great if he could better understand how do login users behave differently than those who aren't logged in? And how does that differ by mobile and by desktop? So using multiple custom variables, which we saw earlier, he's able to capture a lot more nuanced information about this type of traffic. Now, multiple custom variables is a really, really, really powerful feature, um, as you guys are probably familiar with by now. And it allows us to capture unique site usage data in ways that you really couldn't before. And you can do this at the, the page level, at the session level, and at the visit level. In this particular case, Alex wanted to know the login status and how that affects user behavior on a couple different levels. 
So you can see that this is looking at data for only a very short window of time because he just set up his custom variables. But you can already easily see that users who are logged in are be certainly behave differently than those who aren't. And so what he might want to do now is click on the gold conversions tab, look at the e-commerce tab, and see how conversion rates differ and how do transactions differ. And then based on that data, he'll be in a much better position to figure out how he can target these users. So clearly, Alex has had a, a very productive day, and he's done a lot in the last day and a half. And instead of having to log into his account and check in on the health of his reports and uh, see how his goals are doing, he decides to set up a custom alert so that these triggers can automatically be sent to him via email. So when he logs into his intelligence report, he can click on create a custom alert and actually create an alert that will automatically let him know when there are significant changes um, in traffic or in bounce rates or in goal conversion rates in this example so that he doesn't have to go back into his account and see how things are going. And so he's opted in to have this sent him to him via email, but you can also see this within the UI itself. So here, what he really wants to know is, you know, I've launched this mobile campaign. If I launch any other campaigns, what I want to know is, are there going to be any spikes in traffic and from what particular referrals? And so he's created this custom alert so that he can find this information in his inbox without having to come in and log in and check in on, on this all the time. So as we mentioned, Alex has gleaned quite a bit of insightful information from his intelligence reports. He set up goals. He has a multiple custom variables report. He's, he's done a lot. And he wants to ensure that he doesn't forget all that he's done today. So what he decides to use is the annotations feature to make a note in his account to remind him of all the actions that have taken place. Now, annotations is available to anyone who has access to a profile. And so here you can see on this particular day, Alex has made a note to signal when it is that he launched this mobile campaign. And you can leave these notes as shared or private, um, depending on what you want. And this way, if someone else who has access to the report, which happens more often than not, they won't be confused as to you know, who set up these goals, why there's this sudden spike in traffic. And it's, it's a great way to easily communicate um, what kind of changes have ta been taking place. And so here you can see what the annotation looks like when it's been completed. And you can see the markers on the graph indicate other annotations that other analysts might have left. So as we can see, in the last 36 hours, Alex has done a lot. And he's used these powerful features, these flexible features, these intelligent features to glean insightful information in his account, to set up engagement goals, and also to share his takeaways with his colleagues, and much, much more. So this is just one use case of how one might go about using these features. But these, all of this functionality was really created with the intent of meeting all of your own unique business needs. So if you guys have any questions about any of what I just talked about, definitely come to any of us during the break or, or afterwards. Um, we also have a new features webinar that's available on YouTube on our analytics brand channel. And I know that Dinesh will also be speaking to some of our help resources um, later this afternoon as well. Thank you.